Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Mark the messenger. This video is going to be about seven signs that Satan is attacking you. And you got to always understand, guys, always have a spiritual mind when it comes to this life we live, especially if you're a believer in Christ and you're trying to re you're trying to obtain eternal salvation. The devil doesn't want you to get that. So these are seven signs Satan will be exposed. You got to take heed to the message. Now, there's many signs. I could leave 20 signs, but these are the seven things that are top, top priority that Satan tries to get you through. Remember, the only way saying there's two ways Satan can have access to our life, guys. One, either through through us living in a willful sin, or number two is sometimes Satan. Oh, sorry, sometimes God will allow Satan to attack you just to test you. Read the Book of Job. So most of the time, though, guys, it's because of willful sin or disobedience. And we all know what the Scripture says: disobedience leads to curses, leads to you know health issues. It's sin. All links sin links to you being down bad, pretty much. Okay. So number one, guys. And this is not an order, but this is one thing I noticed, especially when I was first reading my Bible for the first time. It says when you read the Bible and you start getting tired and you start getting blasphemous thoughts, like you notice when you pray, right? When you're praying or when you read the Bible, you get like kind of like negative thoughts. Those are demonic strongholds working through you to get those thoughts. Okay. But anyone, let me know in the comments below if that's happened to you guys. When you read the Bible and all of a sudden you feel tired, but when you're playing the video games, when you're chilling with your friends or, you know, doing, doing whatever you were doing, you weren't tired. But the minute you read your Bible, you start getting kind of tired or lazy. That's a, that's an attack. As I said, I'm telling you, that's an attack. That is an attack, man. Or let's say if I'm reading another book, perfectly fine. But the minute I start reading my Bible, okay, because the truth sets you free. The word of God sets you free when you apply it to your life. Because many people, they're, they're just hearers and not doers. But when you're actually trying to become a doer, you're going to get attacked. All right. So understand that. That's, that's, a, that's a demonic attack. How can we fight against those attacks? Now, we got to first examine ourselves and understand what, are, what doors are we opening to allow Satan to attack us. Now, most of the time, I'm going to go over the reasons why. Most of the time, it's because of things we did in our past. So that's once we, we must be, you know, seeking deliverance. And the more, if you want to be delivered, uh, delivered, you could go to like, I, I know there's God does have power to cast out demons of the people. But let's say if you don't know any any people in any church like that, you got to go to the Holy Spirit. You got to surrender yourself to Him, and God will, you know, because the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit is alive. It's working everywhere on earth. So that's what we need. And let's say if you can't, if you don't have a church, you don't have anywhere to go. Best believe you're not going to be forsaken. God doesn't forsake the righteous. All right, number two. When you repent of your sins, oh, this is deep. When you repent of your sins, guys, right? Let's say if you're trying to give up smoking, uh, give up uh, the websites, give up uh, fapping, give up fornication. You're giving up like sin. You're giving up things that were keeping you in darkness, giving up things that were not pleasing to God, right? The devil is going to attack hard. He's going to attack heavy, guys. This is pro this could probably could be number one. Whenever you repent of your sins, the devil's not going to let you go in peace. Uh -uh, because the, all, all those sins you were doing, especially if you've been doing it for years, let's say if you had like, let's say you had like a drug addiction, right? For like 20, 10 years, you're going to get to attack harder than someone who had a drug addiction for like a couple months. Because through all those years, you've been building on the stronghold. You're making that strong, the demonic stronghold more stronger and stronger. So you're going to get attacked even more. And see, a lot of people, when they try to live a righteous lifestyle, they try to be set apart. They get attacked and they get, you know, well, maybe this is not for me. Because when they were living that life of sin, they weren't getting attacked. But they manage, they try to you know live that righteous lifestyle. They get attacked, and that a lot of people give up. A lot of people don't endear. Okay, you got to endear hardship as a good shoulder of Jesus Christ. Understand this walk is not easy. That's why the Bible says many will seek to enter in and shall not be able. So many people they give up. Right? They they you know they lose hope. They lose faith, and they ain't trying to fight the same. They ain't trying to fight the demonic army. So they just you know they put down their armor, or if they didn't have them on, and that's what you need, guys. You need the armor of God. Even the Bible says it's right here, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 15 to 17, and also a precept. Um, I just blocked the screen for me because you guys got to read these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to 18. I probably won't have enough space, but I'll leave that in the description of the video if you haven't checked, if you don't know that verse already. But we must put on the armor so we can fight against the wiles of the devil because the devil is about, he's raging war against us. And let's say if he can't get to you, he's going to use the people around you. If they're, if they're still like in the world or they're still living in sin, he could use them to get to you. And understand that whenever you're giving up your sins, you're going to get attacked. But don't be discouraged. Because there's a reward at the end of this, guys. Best believe. God rewards those. Remember, the Bible says that he who sows to righteousness, there be there will be a sure reward. All right. So be humble and understand that we all fall short and we need we need Jesus Christ. We need the Savior to help us. Okay. He's the so the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ must reside in you when you fight against the devil because he was the first one to destroy the devil. Or he was the only one to defeat the devil on the tree when he was hanged uh for three uh when he was hanged on the tree. So understand that we need him in our life. You can't do nothing on your own. All right, be, and that's, that's requires humility. It requires being humble. All right, number three, 
temptation to sin. The Bible says in one James, James chapter one, verse 13 to 15, God doesn't tempt us, you know, but every man is enticed and what he's drawn to his own lust. And then when lust conceived, it bring forth sin. And then sin, when it is finished, bring forth death. Ooh, that's deep. That's deep. When sin is finished, it brings forth death, spiritual death, or it could even be physical death. Okay. So God doesn't tempt us, guys. Never, whenever, whenever someone uh, is trying to tempt you, that's not God. Okay. So if it's not God, then who else is it? It's a devil. <laughs> this is who it is. It's Satan attacking you, man. It's saying, so understand this, when you're tempted, it ain't God. And remember, the Bible does say, I'll leave a scripture somewhere on here. It says that God is faithful to provide us for a way to escape the temptations. God always provides us a way to escape. Every time I was tempted, guys, even looking back in the, the old, my like years ago, right? Every time I was tempted, God always, he always provided a way out. Always. Now, sometimes when, even when God was providing a way out for me to escape the temptation, I rejected it. And I fell into that snare. I fell into a pit. Okay, so when God's giving you a way to escape, I'm telling you, God will always give you a way to escape, guys. He always, God is faithful. But if we if we reject the uh, if we reject the door to open it to to, to leave that temptation, you're gonna be punished. Okay, you're gonna be punished, man. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is through eternal life through His Son Jesus Christ. Woo! Okay, so remember, when you get, whenever you're getting tempted, that ain't God. You never get tempted to wash the websites or hit the hit the blunt. Or whatever the case is, that's not God, bro. That's not. So understand that we must be wise, wisdom and understanding and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Okay, this is the beginning. So we, we must have the fear of God. And what is the fear of God? To depart from sin, to depart from the, the snares of death. That is the fear of God. Okay, a lot of people don't have that in them in these last days, unfortunately. Number four would be withdrawals. Okay, um, and also I could add this too, just to make this clear. Okay, withdrawals, which equals to, I should just put equal, equals demonic strongholds. Whenever you get withdrawals, guys, like let's say like, for instance, like you want to like, let's say if you had like an alcohol addiction or like, a, you know, any type of, any type of addictions, right? And you try to set, be set free from that addiction. The longer, like I said earlier, the longer you have that addiction, the stronger that demonic strongholds would be. And those withdrawals, understand you must endure because you're going to, be, because all that door, all those years and months and days, whatever how long it was, you open that door through those demonic strongholds that build up. Which, which produces withdrawals, okay? Let's say like, you know, I remember when I stopped smoking, right? I couldn't sleep at night, I couldn't eat. Um, my my fingers were like, it's like I was a crackhead, you know? Like, seriously though, you know? My fingers were itching and all that. It was just like, what the heck? And so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a withdrawal and understand for me. Now everyone's different, but for me it was, I think it was like a week and then after it disappeared. Okay, so understand this. And one thing I noticed about God, right? Let's say God sets you free from the sin and you do it again. You don't get the withdrawals no more because God sets you free. There's no need for you to do it no more. Now, when God sets you free, you have the spirit in you not to even desire to do that. So we, we should, that's why we should never be abuse the spirit of grace. We should never, he who commits sin willfully, or it says, for if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no sacrifice of sin. God set me free from all that. So for me to willfully do that, there, there's no more sacrifice for sins. Okay, there's, there's no, we can't abuse the spirit of grace. Okay, now I know we're saved by grace, but still we can't live in a willful sin and just be a reprobated in mind, given over to reprobated mind, given over to a strong delusion, those who hate the truth. All right, number five is, oh, I notice this too, attacked by the spirit of fear. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind. One thing I noticed, guys, when I was living a life of sin, God, God made me a seer. I could see the spiritual realm. I could see demons in the spirit realm. I could see it. You know, they could call me crazy. You're schizophrenia, whatever, bro. But God let me see. And whenever I was opening the doors to sin, I could see spirits trying to attack me with the spirit of fear. I could see it, bro. I could see it. Because before, I, when I wasn't living that life, uh, opening doors to sin, I didn't see it because I was protected. But when you're opening doors, you could see it. I, I mean, I could see it. And that's a spirit of fear trying to attack me. Okay, and this is remember, God does not give us a spirit of fear. So when you're getting attacked by fear, that's not of God. I'm telling you guys, the spirit of fear is real and, and real, and it opens you. How do you open up that spirit? It's through rebellion, man, through sin, through willful sin. So, like I said, we must repent from all that, guys. So understand that the spirit of fear is, is real, and I used to have that. And that's what that's what this world is throwing on people: the spirit of fear, uh, the spirit of confusion. This is why we must have the helmet of salvation. Okay, the helmet of salvation and put on the full, not just the helmet of salvation, the whole, the whole armor, because in these last days, it is not, not only 
it's required. <laughs> if you want to make it to the eternal life, you got to have the armor on, bro, straight up. Number six will be suicidal thoughts and depression, okay? Um, I had this, you know, I had a lot of times where I was, and that's, that's a satan, uh, demonic attack. That's Satan attacking. Whenever you have suicidal thoughts or like depression, that's Satan attacking you guys. And one thing I noticed is that I was growing weary and I, was, I wasn't connected to Christ. I wasn't connected to God. So when that happened, when I wasn't connected to Christ and God, this is this happens, guys. The suicidal thoughts, depression, being sad. And I'm telling you guys, we must, we must have a relationship with because I was going to church every Sunday. That doesn't matter, bro. Your relationship with Christ, your relationship with God every single day, that's what matters. Nothing wrong with going to church. I'm not demonizing when I go to church, but if you go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, but you don't have a personal relationship with Christ and God every single day, is vain. It's vain, guys. God doesn't dwell in temples made with hands. He's he dwells within you. So we must get to know him. We must seek him every single day because when you're seeking him every single day, you're seeking after his love. You're seeking after his light. You're, you're, you're obeying the commandments, right? Because that's how you that's how you show you love him. If you love me, keep my commandments. So you keep the commandments. That's how action. Think about the times where you get in relationships. We want we want a woman or you want your man to, to prove that he loves you. Okay, it's action. You don't just say it out of your mouth. So we keep the commandments to show that we love God, right? So when, you, when you're building your relationship through him, these depart from you. Okay, all this, all this apart from me, God gives you a spirit to, to destroy all that. Okay, Matthew chapter 11, verse 20 to 30. I'll leave a scripture right here so you guys can see. And uh, yeah, so uh, number seven is lack of self-love and high levels of insecurity. Now, people might be saying, you know, self-love might not be important. The Bible says that there'll be lovers in themselves. But the Bible also says that um, one of the greatest commandments is to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So how can you love your neighbor when you don't love yourself? So self-love is, is required. And one thing demons will do, they'll plant uh, seeds of, of insecurity. You're like, you're not pretty enough. You're not cute. You're not worthy enough. Those are all sane attacks, guys. And this is what, and how do we combat? Remember, how, how did Jesus fight the devil? When, he, when, he, when the, the devil attacked him, when he was fasting, he attacked him with the word of God. When you're on your spiritual warfare journey, Every single day, when the devil's attacking you, when Satan's attacking you, you got to attack him back with the word of God too. Do the same thing, the sword of the spirit. Okay, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, which is the truth. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12, uh, the word of God is sharp, double, uh, sharper than a two-edged double sword. So understand this, guys, whenever you're getting like this lack of self-love and that feeling in your mind, those demons attacking you, the, lack, the high, high levels of insecurity. I can be honest, guys, I don't have any insecurities no more. Like when Christ is in you, there's nothing to be insecure about. Like, there's nothing, and from my experiences, not to act all high mighty or anything like that, but when, when you have, when you, when you love God, he loved Christ, there's no, there's no, there's no room for insecurities. There's no room for lack of self-love. When you love your neighbor as you love yourself, when you love God wholeheartedly, there's no room for, there's no, there's no, what, what is this? I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. So let's break it down, guys. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe the channel. That's one's going to be, read the Bible and you start getting... Uh, tired, blasphemous thoughts. Number two would be repent of your sins, spiritual warfare. Number three would be temptations to sin, withdrawals, demonic strongholds. Number five will be attacked by the spirit of fear by opening doors to willful sin. Number six is suicidal thoughts and depression. Number seven is lack of self-love and high levels of insecurity. I hope you guys learned so much from this video. If you haven't already, check out this Instagram right here too. We've dropped a lot of gems. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Oh, also, there's, there's scammy people in my comments below. They're using fake profile and pictures of me. So if you guys want to support me, my links are in the description. Don't, if I would never go out of my way to email you or text you or anything like that. That's all scammers. So if you want to support me, my links, social media, all that down in the description below. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.